Hey guys, welcome back to another episode episode on our BSD channel. Thank you for watching. And today I'm joined with Mrs. Harrison, who is the secondary school principal of Bingham Academy, and she's here to answer all your questions about reopening and how Bingham will handle it. So thank you so much, Mrs. Harrison, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone watching oh, thank you. appreciates it. Yeah. Yeah, we can't wait to see is in person and just you online for those that can't join right away yeah oh, yeah we get to start in person which is so huge yeah so exciting yeah <laughs> so i'm sure there's a lot of questions but i think we can group some of them together because some of them are very similar so i think a question that everyone is wondering is what the first day of school will look like so mrs erickson can you just tell sure. us what it would be and just what we should expect yeah. and not expect from last year. Yeah, so I'll just go through kind of minute by minute. So just like usual, the gates open at 7.30 in the morning mm -hmm. and the first class for period one starts at 8.10. So that's similar, but once you get the school campus, it will be a little different. So um, there will be people from our office staff like Mr. Hall and Ms. Field and Mrs. Weens. Um, There'll be people taking temperatures and making sure that students have their masks on. So once that you pass kind of a health screening, we'll ask you questions like, have you had any cold symptoms? Have you had a fever? So as, after you pass that little health screening with your temperature checking things, you'll wash your hands. We have some hand washing stations. And then there will be different people that will help direct students to their classrooms. So instead of gathering all together under the tuples, we have to maintain a physical distance to keep everyone healthy. So we'll direct students to their classrooms for first period. And then in first period, we're going to go through how, like every student at Bingham now has a binghamacademy.net email address. And we're going to share how you sign on to our school digital platform. And so we'll talk through that, you know, what are you excited about for this? what have you done recently that kind of thing mm -hmm. um you we'll talk we have like walking paths so that we don't all congregate together um so we will have first period 55 minutes five minute break second period 55 minutes, and then you have a have a snack sort of spread out and socialize for 30 minutes and then another your third period period class for 55 minutes and fourth period, period class and the school day ends our face-to-face -face school day ends at 12 30 and then for high schoolers you'll take your two period five and period six classes you'll take those online and there'll mm -hmm. be um, some online information and assignment for you to do for the rest of the day so mm -hmm. um and we're kind of there'll be different areas that you after fourth period you'll go wait in those areas and we'll call you when your ride is here for you to go to your car oh, okay. so we're just we're a little more spread out, but we're just thankful to be together. Yeah. yeah. And about the first day of school, so almost everything is the same, all the same classes, almost the same times as every class. And can you explain what will happen once we go home for high schoolers for like our last two periods? How will that work when we do that online? Sure. So um, when you have online lessons, basically you will... Um, check into that class through Schoology Online and you'll see what your teacher has posted. And usually there could be a discussion for you to participate in that kind of build on what you've learned in person. There may be another getting to know you type post, um, a review of the syllabus, that kind of thing. So just before your next face-to-face -face class, you'll need to have um, checked in and done whatever your teacher has posted for you online. We don't expect for it to be synchronous. We don't expect for, like, if you would normally have fifth period 1.30 to 2.30, we know some people will still be in their taxis. So it's not like a synchronous class that you have to be in in that time, mm. but you will have a, an assignment that's expected that you'll have done to prepare for the next face-to-face -face class. Yeah. Okay. And, like, the last two periods can be any classes, right? They can be, for example, 11th and 12th grade, yeah. it can be PSSAT or even study hall, just whatever happens to be your final two periods. Yeah. So your schedule in high school will look very similar to the years before where, you know, how the same class kind of, you'll have it like first period one day, then second period, and third period, like that, it kind of goes through and then the kind of shifts throughout the week. It's just like that. So we call it the chop. So you have 
in-person classes to lunch, chocolate, and then after lunch classes online. And basically you'll have each class. We really tried to make sure that, especially for Cambridge courses, that you would at least, that, that you would need at least three times a week in person. So we're really trying to prioritize that face-to-face -face instruction because we think that you'll get information best that way and then kind of review and offer some extension through the online platform. Oh, okay, that's good. So it'll look very similar for high school. Middle school, it's a little different, but I'm going to focus on high school because BSD is particularly focused on high school. Yeah, and this is Kirsten. Yeah. While we're on the subject of online classes and online courses, I was wondering, so for the people that are currently stuck in other countries or they can't be here yeah. to school, how will that work out for them and how, how will they be doing the online classes while some of us will also be going to school? So for those that can't be here face to face yet, we're posting our objectives for the week online. We'll post like the um, pages in the textbook that we covered, a couple of assignments and things like that. And we're expecting for the students who are joining in online, they're doing the work that's posted and we will feedback on that work, but they, they will not receive, um, well, we can even grade it. Like, let's just say if you put, if you did work for my, um, AS English, which for example, I would give you similar feedback as my other students, but in power school, I would put push exempt because I'm not there giving the same support to you. I don't know what resources you have access to in other countries. So you will do as much of the work as possible and I will give you as much feedback as possible to make sure you don't get too far behind. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just will exempt in power school, those grades until you get here. And so if someone gets here, say um, mid, November and they're joining in mid-November at Bingham, mm. then I would just say, okay, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you. I'm glad we've interacted online. I want you to take this quiz over the unit that covered in person. Let me see where you are. Make mm. sure that you feel strong and ready to join in person. And then I would start posting and not exempting the grades once you get here. Oh, okay. So for the grades that uh, some students do online and that are exempt, yeah. Once they come back to school, yeah. do those grades become, yeah. do they not become exempt? Do they become part of their grades or do they completely start off new yeah. with a new grade back when they come to school? So um, we need to discuss that a little bit more. So what I plan to do is to say, these are the units that we've covered so far. Let me give you a quiz on that and see what you've learned during your online time. And that quiz would be your first grade for the rest of the school year. Yeah. So I would, okay, here's your quiz grade. This is where your grades start now that you're at Bingham. And then now you're starting to get beyond that quiz, the same grades as the people who are here face to face. Yeah. So I would give you just um, one of those. Now I'm willing to discuss with students about that. If they've done some papers or things like that, I'd be willing to look at that and maybe um, consider adding some of that in. But I want to talk with students and see what they've learned and where they are and start basically from when you get here, but I just need to assess you somehow to make sure that that work that I've seen online really represents the understanding yes. of what we've covered in person. Okay. And this is Harrison, yeah. so back to school. How will the classrooms yeah. look like? How will they change? Because you haven't been there for a long time and what exactly will be yeah. the some arrangements? I kind of joke with the pun, it's kind of spaced out, you know, it's, it's just everything has lots of space. So there has to be yeah. two meters between where the teacher speaks in the, in the row of first desk and two meters between where each student sits. It's, it's a little more spacious than exam seating. But there's a space between the front of the room. So we can fit in most of the Gowan's classrooms, we can fit between 14 and 18 students in those classrooms and follow our health guidelines. Um, but basically, you know how before in Gowans, there were tables in most of the classrooms that could seat two students per table. Yes. Remember that? So now it's just going to be one student per table and all mm -hmm. the students are facing the same direction and things like that. So students will be expected and teachers to wear their masks in the class um, as much as possible. Yeah. And just we have less students per class. So if a lot of the students are able to come back from the start. We're giving those classes, like our gym flex, where we can seat 25, our chapel, where we can seat 25. But most classes, we have about 16 to 18 students per class coming back. And so they have a classroom that will fit the number of students from that grade that are in person. Mm. So we just have lots of 
um, space in our classrooms. And then we also have some guides, some pathways. So there's like kind of a one direction walkways so that we're not congregating all together um, around like high congestion areas like lockers. Mm -hmm. So there's just more space <laughs> in each classroom. Yeah. And in each classroom, what are the stuff that we can bring and that we can share? Or are there any stuff that we can share with each other? And what are the yeah. Like, the policies so yeah, right now we say we don't want you to share materials. We don't want you to share pens and pencils and things like that because um, it's just a way that we can pass germs. Uh, so there may be some things where we'd say, okay, today I want you to use rulers. So I want everyone to use their hand sanitizer now or use the class hand sanitizer. Yeah. I'll pass out rulers, use them. Now I'm going to take them back and sanitize them. Now, you know, wash your hands again. There, we can do some of that, but for the part, we want students to bring their own book bag, their own um, hand sanitizer, their own pens and pencils in a little bag with their name on it. So mm -hmm. For ninth and 10th grade, they'll have a classroom hub and they're going to keep their book bag in that classroom and their stuff at that desk and use that desk every day. For grade 11 and 12, you guys have small classes all over. So we're going to let you use your lockers. We just need you to follow the, you know, marked walking paths and um, just not share materials, like yeah. as much as you can not share materials just to keep everyone healthy. Yes. So bring a water bottle, bring a midday snack. We're going to let you have, so bring a water bottle, bring a snack, have time to spread out and have a snack, um, bring your pens and pencils, bring a book bag, and yeah. um, just, you know, basically what you normally take to school, except we are not sharing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just remembered on the, on our lockers, are we allowed to use our lockers from now on or are they off limits for now on? Grades 11 and 12 only are allowed to use their lockers right now because okay. your classes are small and spread out all over campus. Okay. Um, and we just, we are trusting you guys to maintain physical distance at your locker and just go a couple people at a time. If it gets too crowded there, we're going to have to say, sorry, you can't use your lockers. It's getting to be a place where you could be sharing germs. But we're going to start school with letting you use lockers mm -hmm. just for those two grades, trusting you to spread out. The other grades really have one classroom most of the day where the teachers are coming to that classroom except for languages so you would just take your language book from your you know desk data that's always your desk station and grade nine and ten would take their language book for their language class and then bring it back so they shouldn't need lockers and should be able just to spread out their stuff at that desk for all the time so that's where we're starting <laughs> that's good and this is Harrison for our recess mm -hmm. hours, we'll, or you said we're going to have a 30 minute recess, what will that look like right. and what are things that we can and can't do like before? Okay, you can socialize and talk with your friends um, with maintaining your two meters. So basically, if you guys spread out your arms, you shouldn't be able to touch anyone. And you can eat your snack then. Um, so right now, that's it, is just having a snack and socializing. Um, as we get further into the school year, as we're maintaining health, then we can say, oh, you can kick around a soccer ball because, or things that like just touch your feet that we're not sharing and holding together. At some point we can add that. And if things go well, we can do like hand washing and then again, but not yet. So right now it's just each grade has their own area of the campus to have their snack break and their social time. And then back with our PE classes, we do have special designated equipment that we're going to um, keep for grade only and sanitize between like PE classes and just have everyone use hand sanitizer or wash their hands. So PE classes will get to use some PE equipment. But right now um, we're not doing PE type sports things during the break. It's just kind of a social snack time. Okay. Well, that's fun. That's good to know that at least you can socialize and hang out some, somewhere yeah. like before. Yeah, and have a break. Like if you're if you're distanced enough outside, have a break from your mask and breathe and eat, and then back on it goes back to class. So yeah, yeah we all need some mask breaks and we all need social time and to see each other's faces. Because we were saying this week at teacher orientation, we've all had our masks on, the people presenting and the people listening, and we're it's taking so much energy to like, are they smiling at me? Do they yeah. understand? We don't know. Yeah. So it's just we need that break to see some. Faces, you know? Yeah. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. And Mrs. Harrison, while we're on that topic, so on recess hours, can we go to the cafe or will the cafe be open from now on? The cafe is not open right now. Mm. So the Elipto Cafe is closed and we have to, um, like, just the way that it's run is not within the current health practices during mm. COVID. So um, in a few months, we can reevaluate and see if there's some type of way that we can do like take and go items, but uh, it's just too risky and congested right now. So it will be open at first. So anything that you guys want to bring to um, eat or drink will have to come from home because there's mm -hmm. the cafe won't be open and the school won't be serving lunches. Um, yes. So yeah, so just bring a midday snack and water bottle or drink or something from home. Okay, and on our PSCCG classes, for our PSCCG mm -hmm. classes for us, most of us will be all together, usually for 11th and 12th graders where we usually don't have classes together. So once we have too many kids together, how will the classroom's arrangements look like then for 11th and 12th graders? Okay, so for now, for grade 12, for grade 12 has PSS, I mean, grade 12 has PSSHE, scheduled in the gym flex because we can fit your whole class in the gym flex together. So that's where you'll be for PSSHE. And for other classes, like when you have five or six students in a class, we have you scheduled in rooms that are smaller. If we get to the point that we have too many students to fit inside the classroom, and we're not there yet yes. in secondary, if we get to that point, we have tents set up outside and we will move desks to outdoor spaces. Oh. <laughs> so there's a chance that if we get if get enough people doing our face-to-face -face programs, we'll have our big classrooms open where we can sit everyone at the two meter distance and then we'll have outdoor classroom spaces under tents. And we think that by the time we get to that number, that actually will be past the rainy season and we can have some good outdoor spaces for mm -hmm. class. So we just, um, we need to maintain the physical distance and we good ventilation and so we will welcome whoever can be here. It's just we have to know in advance when people are coming. So we make sure that we have a desk for you and a nice, well-ventilated, safe space. Mm -hmm. For 11th and 12th, you probably won't be outside for 11th and 12th because it's all your, your electives and your Cambridge courses and your BA courses, mm -hmm. which usually max out about 15 students. So you guys will have a very similar um, work day. It'll probably be some of the middle school classes that eventually get big enough to have spaces like the chapel where we can fit 25 desks and spaces and tents outside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because it'll, it'll be nice if we can hear each other well. So yeah. we, we may need to work on, work on that sound or something. We yeah. will, we will get there as long as we can <laughs> keep you safe. <laughs> I, I hope so. And Mrs. Harrison, I wanted to ask you about extracurricular activities and just how that would look like, because uh, of course, like, we need to keep our distance and obviously it's not going to be a full day anymore but what will happen to clubs such as student council or just robotics club and all the other after school activities that we would usually do right now we're not offering those activities in person we can only offer online options for that mm -hmm. so we can set up an online club through Schoology. And so you'll see when you sign into Schoology, you'll have your vertical tutor groups, your VTG time, you'll have some fun activities to do online. And so right now it's the same with the other clubs. You'll need to talk with your uh, club sponsor and begin those online. If there are ways that we can distance you um, during the school day, we can look into that. But right now our school day ends at 1230 and we're not running any after school extracurricular activities and we hope that that will change over time that as we continue with healthy school practice the first few months we can start kind of adding things back a little bit at a time but not at the beginning of the school year yeah okay hmm. and on that same topic about online classes i just i wanted to add and ask on so when we do online classes and when we're given for example homework or like the classwork for that day that we have to do at home when will the deadline be? Will it be that teachable when everything will be posted on Monday and then 
that kind of has a deadline on Friday, or will it just be maybe even just a deadline for tomorrow, or what will the classroom right. plan be? So it's up to your individual teacher. Some teachers are planning to do something very similar to Schoology, posting on a Monday and having it due on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Others will say, okay, you access your class that day and do you before our next in-person class. Others will say, you have two online classes and two face-to-face. -face. You have basically one online assignment they will work on over two days. So it's going to, there's going to be a lot of variety. And I would just say as 11th and 12th graders, keep talking with your teacher about what works best for your learning and what works best for um, the teacher. But we have a lot of contact hours. Like normally a Cambridge course, for example, is 190 contact hours. Right now, you're at about 130. So we are needing you to do a pretty good amount of research and study with your online time. So I would just say, mm -hmm. if you have an online class, take it seriously, spend an hour on that class and plus some of your homework time before your next in-person meeting. We've got to get a good bit of content into those online classes for everyone's learning to be ready for their end of year exams. Yeah, and just about the end of year exams, those are still planned to go on as they should, right? So we would, we would use yes. Okay, so we would have mocks during February or March and- Right, okay. right. Yeah, so on our school calendar now, we still have mocks um, set up for February and March and still our um, end of year exams and um, end of June. So normal exams, we're planning to go forward and just um, Cambridge is planning to go forward with that right now. So we are just doing the best to prepare everyone for those. Mm -hmm. And also about the online classes, well, for students that are out of country currently, or s the students are, that are unable to come to school, will they be able to get a textbook or an online version of a textbook that they can use to just to do normal classwork or homework? So it really depends on, it's course by course. So mm -hmm. some of our textbooks that we purchased have digital access codes that we can give and others do not. And so if, um, if you do not have the digital access code to the text that the teacher can give you, we would put kind of buddy up the online student with a face-to-face -face student and say to the face-to-face -face student, I want you to scan textbook pages that we've covered to the person who is out of country. So we're just going to try to buddy you up if you don't have an online access code because for copyright reasons, as teachers, we can't scan the whole textbook in unless we have the digital access code. So we're going to kind of buddy up um, in person and sort of overseas follow along program to say, okay, scan your friend a couple pages at a time what they need. Oh, okay. Pictures or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and final question from me, but then there's still some more questions from Sarah, and I'm so sorry to ask you so okay. much. But That's good. This is how we hash it out. And there may be some that I don't have the answers to that I have to write down and say, I'll get back to you on that because we have made thousands of decisions as we've begun, you know, our pathways, our learning pathways. So bring on the questions. It helps us refine our program. Yeah. So my final question is first, students who take study hall, how will that take place and what kind of supervision or just what will happen during our study hall hours? Sure. So right now, we do not have the study hall in the same place. So where we used to have the study hall and the hub is too small of a room yes. to study hall students. So we have given you a large Gowan Center classroom where you have um, like your own assigned desk in that place and you can Whoa. spread out for your study hall. And so we will just have teachers kind of from the Workrooms peeking in and checking to make sure everyone is maintaining the proper sort of study etiquette, using it as study, maintaining the proper distance. And um, you can have the privilege of that space as long as you're using the study hall well. And if someone's not being healthy, we'll say, I'm sorry, you're not using your, um, your free time well. You'll get a warning, but after that, you'll need to follow along program online until you can assure us that you're going to help you know, keep everyone safe with following the guidelines you're given. So um, we've given you a big study hall room and we're trusting that you're going to use it well so that we can all study well and be healthy mm -hmm. together. So 
you still got some freedom and independence as long as we can keep within our health guidelines. Mm. Oh, that's good to know. So Mrs. Harris, yeah. a few days ago, actually, I posted just a, a, a story on our Insta on VSC's Instagram page, just asking students if they if they have any specific questions that they want me to ask you. Sure. So I'll just read them sure. out. And some of them are very sure. similar to what we talked about. And yeah, maybe you could just okay. skip over them. But this one person asks, can we play in the gym and courts? And very similar to that question is, will we still have sport practices? And I think by that they mean like U14 after school basketball or just any sports stuff that you would usually do. Right. Um, not yet. We're not having um, U14 like basketball and sport times right now. It's not within our current path of um, COVID regulations. Should the cases start drastically going down in Addis, we can start adding, first of all, sports that don't have shared equipment, things like, um, like cross country and things like that. We can start adding back in those types of ways, school uh, sports that don't share equipment. But right now there's no, there's no kind of free sport time on the outdoor court or in the gym. Again, PE classes, when they're monitored by a teacher and things, do have certain types of physical games and activity that don't require a lot of contact. They're not high contact. But right now, um, closed contact sports are one of the most risky things, that, so we can't do that as a school right now. But we do hope to add things back um, yeah. as we're able. Mm -hmm. So another question is, what will happen to school chapel? Okay, so a few weeks in school. Right now, your school chapel becomes a PSSHE class, so you'll have an additional PSSHE. But Mr. Lewis and Mr. Coleman are beginning the process of putting together some worship videos and some worship talks. And so it will be kind of a video um, viewing and conversation follow-up with PSSHE, sharing prayer requests. So we're going to try to build sort of an interactive chapel program that you would participate in as a grade level. So grade 12 would view and participate in the chapel, add comments, discussion, um, see worship videos, and things like that. Um, so that would, that would be once a week as soon as we get those up and going. It probably won't be the first week of school because we have so much to yeah. cover with all of our new practices. But a few weeks in, we plan to have some um, kind of chapel views that each grade level participates in together. Oh, that's really nice. So, yeah, basically just mm -hmm. online version of chapel, which is a great idea. Yeah, that you experience face-to-face, -face, like, all together. Yeah, like online chapel. Yeah. Yeah. And another question is, what will happen to VTGs? VTGs are also online. So you will be able to uh, sign on to Schoology and see who is in your VTG groups, so if you, just like it's been before, kind of a couple of sixth graders, a couple of seven, a couple of eight. And then Mr. Lewis has a couple of fun activities for each month that you guys can do. He shared some with me, kind of like Mad Lib games and different things like that, that can be yeah. sort of fun online games to get to know each other yeah. and discussions. So we'll do VTGs virtually um, until the point that we can cross over pods but right now we have like these grade level pods that are not supposed to cross over just there's less exposure to different things yeah oh, that's, good. Oh, that's yeah good. i know there's a lot of change and some of these things are hard and I, it's not it's not a normal year um and i'm sad with students and teachers about some of that but i'm also really thankful that we can start and just take you know appreciate some of the things that we can do but it's mm -hmm. it's not the same and i'm sad about some of that but we are going to try to do some things we're even talking for the senior class you know Maybe there is a once a month that we can um, host a distant like um, social time or something. We really want to make sure that as we're able, that we can kind of give some senior privilege and do some social events um, as we can. So we can work together on that. Okay. <laughs> Miss Mehi has uh, some great ideas, and I know Miss Mehi will work with your PSHE class to to get some good. Um, you know, once a monthly social gatherings in a distance fashion outside. Like we, we have to be creative. And so the more we do outside, the more we do with masks, the more it's ventilated, the more options that we have. And we will just, we will keep being creative so we can work something out. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Harrison, there was 
a bunch of questions just about online learning and how that would look like for people that can't attend school. So one person asked, if you choose path one for the whole school year, how would that affect our GPA? And I believe path one is where they just do online the whole school year. And if someone did choose to do that, how would that, what will happen to their GPA for that year? Um, there's not a path one choice for the whole school year. So the longest that someone can do the follow along program where we give you feedback on your work but not graded, the longest that can happen is for semester. And um, that's a long time to be just online. So our, right now, the school is able to start with path two. We're able to start face-to-face -face, and that's our preferred path for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if you can't be here right away and need extra time, we will give you that follow along program through um, the Christmas break. Yeah. But it's not a whole year option and it wouldn't be a full school program as if you were face-to-face. -face. So we would say if you, if you if you think that you have to do online beyond Christmas break, then you need to find another program. Cambridge offers courses online that you can just take directly through Cambridge. There are other programs like Seven Star, North Star, there's some other full online programs um, that are designed for that, but Bingham doesn't have the um, staff capacity to offer fully online and fully face-to-face. -face. So we can do follow along online and face-to-face, -face, or if for some reason the school has to close, we can shift this attention to everyone going online if needed for some health reason. But um, there's not a path one option for the whole school year. And so if someone knows they can't be at being, a, they need to go ahead and um, withdraw for the year and then come back next year and find, uh, find a year long digital option. But we are not offering a year-long digital option right now. Mm. The, met, the most we can do is, like I said, through Christmas break, and you'll need to show that you're ready, that you've really been following along, listen to teachers' feedback, and you can pass those mm. um, sort of topics that we've covered so far that show that you're on your way to passing the, the Cambridge course at the end of the year, because our teachers are taking that really seriously to prepare you for those exams, and we have mm. a lot to fit in. So. Uh, just get here as soon as you can, as soon as your family feels comfortable with the health practices and that it's a, a safe place for you and your family. Um, get here as soon as you can. We can work with you online till Christmas at the latest. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the confusion was, or the many questions were asking, what if I couldn't come for the next few months? What will that look like? And I think it was that fear that whatever you do online, you need to show that you have been doing it online in school. Yeah, yeah. So follow along online, and when you get here, we'll just give you just a, um, you know, within the first week that you get here. So we'll give you a quiz from some of the topics that we've covered. Make sure that you're that you're ready to go and that you feel confident in that course. If for some reason you didn't pass that, we'd have to work with you and see if we can catch you up or say, oh, maybe it's better that you take a different course. If you have, mm -hmm. if you have room to take a, a semester, we have a number of semester courses at Bingham that run, you know, first semester now is thinking and communication. You can do first or second semester, first finance. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of semester courses that we say, okay, that that doesn't look like it's gonna be successful for you to just do the second semester for whatever reason. Look, look and see what your other options are mm -hmm. that would be successful for your GA or whatever. So mm -hmm. uh, we will work. I, I believe that our Bingham students are really gonna take their online learning seriously and they want to be here. And so I'm not concerned that people aren't going to be trying. I just want to make sure they feel, um, you know, ready and supported to succeed the second mm. half of the year. Mm. And just to clarify, whoever does their work yeah. online, they really, it's expected of them to actually do the work, even though they won't be face-to-face. -face. All teachers will expect them to right. do the homework and hand it in or do whatever project yeah. there are. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that you're expected to do the work and we'll give you back on that work. Um, in many cases, you'll receive a grade for that work, but it won't go into power school. It'll be exempted there. So you're giving feedback, but it's just, you're not getting the same program as someone face-to-face, -face, so the grade wouldn't quite mean the same thing. So we're wanting to have a lot of integrity around that here. Okay. And a different question type. So one yeah. person asked, would we be wearing masks the whole day? Yes, you'll be wearing masks the whole school day, uh, except for when you're eating at your break time. You can take a mask off to eat. You can have, occasionally you can ask for a mask break just to take a breather. Um, 
and especially middle school classes, we'll just kind of walk outside, spread out, take a little breather break and come back in. Um, but yeah, masks outside, masks in the classroom, it's just something that we're gonna have to get used to. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing it as teachers, actually really long days from, you know, 7.30 in the morning till 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> we wear them except to, to eat and drink and spread out outside when we have um, our snacks. So mm -hmm. yeah. But you just say, bring a couple masks. Have the one that you wear. Uh, if you get tired of that one, if your ears are getting sore, switch your mask, wear a different one. There's mm -hmm. some different things that'll take the pressure off your ears. So, you know, just we'll have to have a variety of masks so we don't get too stuffy or sore with the ones that we have. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah masks all the time is our new normal right now. <laughs> it will be, yeah, for a while, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually surprised at this question because I didn't think about it and it's actually BSD related. So someone asked, oh. in what way will BSD bake sales be impacted by social distancing? Or even just to add on to that, can we do a bake sale or stuff that we usually would have done, maybe just even fundraising with that be allowed? Yeah. Yeah. So what you would need to do is to write up a proposal and submit it. We have a COVID health team. And so even uh, different things that we've proposed as a school, we send to our COVID team and they review it for health regulations and they give us different guidelines and things to work with. So I would say, you know, um, see if there's a way that you can propose um, things like that that are within the guidelines of not sharing um, utensils and spaces and things. Like that. Propose it and we'll look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's good to know, oh, especially coming into the new year, in the new school year. Mm -hmm. And another question is why is school a half day? Is it, yeah, why is school a half day and wouldn't it just be better if it was a full day? Yeah, we hope to be able to go to full days eventually. Like, if we can maintain a lot of it, is the types of um, cleaning that we're doing, the types of um, interactions that we're allowed to have right now. Like, um, we can't physically space out our whole student body for a time. We don't have the space to do that in a socially distanced fashion, particularly with eating. We can do grab and go foods for different things. In fact, when we do do our merit celebrations. We are going to have some grab and go things that will take, like those who get their um, cinnamon roll or their celebration. We can do a grab and go and get it spread out in the field in small groups, but we don't have the capacity for the whole school to do that right now. Um, but hopefully, we can look at it. And the other is because we're going a portion online, that takes a lot of time and planning for teachers too. So we only have a certain number of hours in the school day. And we said, this is as much as we can offer now. Start simple, what we can do in a healthy way. And then we can add programs and hours as we kind of get in the groove. If we see, okay, this is working well, where everyone's wearing their mask, following their guidelines. We're getting used to our digital platform. Okay, we have greater capacity. We're ready to go to a little fuller program. We want to, um, to grow it, but we need to do simple safely for a couple months and say, look, we are, um, we don't have any COVID cases. We don't have, um, you know, students who are not following our teachers, our teachers are following them. We're, we're doing really well. This, we're ready. We're ready to add some time, but we have to start simple and we have to start smaller first so that we have um, just the programs and capacity in place to add. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask you just a general question. Whatever things that we're doing now, they're not like, they, they might not happen for the entire school year, right? They might change maybe sometime during October or mm -hmm. just whenever things get, yeah, yeah. things can improve, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so again, one reason that we did half days is there's, there's research that shows that kind of, if you can limit your time to four hours um, of contact, that there's, there just shows um, better, you know, long-term health with that. And then um, adding beyond that hours, it ha you have to have some type of breathe a break, cleansing time. So um, yeah, and these, it doesn't mean it's gonna be like that the whole school year. Mm. Um, in fact, we kind of have these pathways too with this half digital and half face-to-face -face so that if we do need to say, oh, there's sickness in this one grade, we're gonna need to take 
that great if maybe we have one or two or three haven't decided what the threshold is yet. Our health team will help us, but we say we may need to say, okay, that grade needs to go completely online for a while. Now all that work is graded if you're completely online because mm -hmm. you you know we have the system going. But we might have to say, okay, there's been some exposure in this area. That group only is going to be online. Or maybe for some reason if at in Addis if the cases go up, our school might need to go online. So we just needed to have kind of familiarity with both pathways so that we could go um, hopefully one day fully on campus, full program, sports. I mean, that's everyone's heart desire, but we can also go the other way fully online if we need to um, as different grade level groups or as different um, as whole school if needed. Mm -hmm. And I think also another thing that I got from you was it can also vary from teacher to teacher, I think, is what you also mentioned before because you said, for example, if someone wrote an English essay, for example, in your class, and you could tell that they really spent hours on it and it just happened to yeah. be online, if that person comes and shows <laughs> you, they might, you might consider it to be graded or not be graded. So yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say bring it with you. Show me your drafts. You know, I love, you know, I do see your rough draft and your changes. Show me the process and, mm. you know, consider those types of things are going to take on a case-by-case -case basis and we can say, okay, well, here you are in person. This is what you're showing me. And I can see your handwriting. I can really see that it's your work. I can see you've worked on it. Um, it's consistent with what you're turning in now. I would consider that. And I know other teachers would too, but it's not, um, you know, it's just, it's to prepare you to show in person that you've mastered those objectives. So, um, but we'll work with it. And if we go fully digital, then everyone's going to be receiving the same grade, the same program, mm -hmm. all digital. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to have some flexibility. Yeah, and I all think of us. Just get used to it because we all like to be planned yeah. out and go with our lives. But yeah. we just need to get used to this yeah. new flexibility. Yeah. I think you're gonna love like the Schoology platform is so much better than Teachable. It shows you like on the calendar. It shows you what's due for our classes. It'll prompt you. You can do updates. Um, there's even times that your teachers can click that you can revise your work and submit it again and times for feedback. So it's just uh, a much better platform that it's pretty clear what's due when. And it just like pops up reminders for the students. Okay, this is due today. Here's your little calendar of what to prioritize. And um, it, yeah, it's a great program. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. Oh. Mrs. Harrison, this is all the questions I have for you and all the questions that everyone sent to me. But thank you so much for answering them. I, yeah, I, I, thank I you. And yeah, and I'm yeah, sure I appreciate you. just the heart and the students' heart that submitted stuff. And I can't wait till we're figuring these things out. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be more questions for all of us arise. But we've got a good plan and a good start. And um, we will look forward to freedoms being added back in. All right. <laughs> thank you so much, Ms. Sierra. Yeah. Really All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. God bless. See you soon. Yeah, I'll see you. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching our YouTube video. That's all we have for today. If you like it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment down below if you have any extra questions. We'll ask Ms. Harrison and let you know as well. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and yeah, stay tuned for another video next week. Thank you. Bye.